In this test, I'm going to be looking at the Pentair Superflow Variable Speed Pump. I'm going to be running it through the paces here on my 2-inch system. Uh, I'm going to be monitoring how much water I'm able to move and how much electricity the pump consumes over a various RPM set. So let's go ahead and take a look here. I've already got the pump dialed in. 500 there rpm and that's the minimum amount I needed in order to register any flow at all and the first first uh, number that I'm able to register is 17 gallons per minute so I'm getting 17 gallons per minute the pump itself is installed with a 240 volt electrical service there top left uh, the current amperage draw no pun intended is 0.8 amps on the left there and uh, 63 watts top right now first of all you might be wondering about those numbers it's it's uh worth noting that the pump itself draws power even when it's not turning the motor even just the fact that you're supplying power to you know i'm sure that there's uh all sorts of transformers in there and digital circuitry and capacitors that need to be charged things like that so it's about half an amp or so that i noticed the 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 system draws even when the pump is off so when you see 0.8 amps there, what I'm seeing that at is about, you know, 0.3 amps or so in actual, uh, you know, consumption of energy for moving water. That being said, this is only a problem at the very, very, very lowest RPM uh, speeds here. As we uh, crank it up, that number is going to become more and more accurate throughout. So let's go ahead and just take a quick look at the system before we go. This test is utilizing two suction lines, one inch and a half, one two inch. The, honestly, the inch and a half is almost inconsequential. I could close it completely and, and hardly change the flow values at all. Uh, but ultimately, this is going to be a two inch test because after the pump, after this 150 square foot cartridge filter, maximum design flow rate 120 gallons per minute, I want to send all of this water through the two inch system specifically on top there and through the flow meters there we go i've got an analog meter that has a digital upgrade as well as a secondary analog meter for redundancy and so again we're simulating a two inch system here so at 500 rpm we have 17 gallons per minute before i even get started let me just say that First of all, that's amazing. 17 gallons per minute is actually a lot. Add that up. If you ran, ran your pump all day long like that, it's actually quite a bit of flow volume that you're going to be able to achieve with an absurdly low RPM. And you're like, great, I'm just going to go set my our variable speed pump to zero and enjoy the savings. And, and let me tell you, that's not how it works. Every pool system is different. There is resistance to flow inherent in the build, in the design of your system. 500 RPM might get you a little bit of flow if you have a small pool and your pump is right next to the pool and you have a clean filter, that kind of thing. The average pool, like a large in-ground pool, and especially any kind of fancy one that has like an attached hot tub or an in-floor cleaner, forget about it, you're not going to get any flow at 500 RPM, like flat zero. So I'm able to tell because I have meters, I have the ability to monitor flow rates. You should have it too, and it is something that you can and should get something that more and more pool owners are going to be getting moving forward because of the need to buy a variable speed pump. This is something that you're going to be aware of already or you're going to be aware of soon because when your single speed pool pump breaks, you're not going to be able to buy another one. You're not going to be able to get service to the one that you have because you will need, you'll be forced to buy a variable speed pool pump. They are very economical and that's what I'm trying to show you here in this video. This is an entry level pump, the, the Pentair Superflow VS. It's not too much money. Uh, I'm running it on a two inch system. Let's run it through the paces and see what kind of flow volume we get versus power consumption. So first of all, this is just really low numbers. So we're going to jump up, let's say 750. There we go, 750. Twenty-four, 23, 24 gallons per minute. So it's right on that, you know, kind of 23 and a half number. Up here we've got 0.88 amps, about 92 watts. Bring it up to 1,000. Now we're getting into realistic territory. 
for a lot of pools to actually have some appreciable flow. About 29 gallons per minute. 132 watts, about one amp. Bring her up to 12.50. 35 gallons per minute. One hundred and eighty five watts, one point one six amps. Fifteen hundred. So I'm gonna say, you know, right in that 40 and a half, 41 gallons per minute. 1.41 amps, 260 watts. It's approximately half speed. Again, just you say half speed, okay, so it's not going to be very much, right? 50 gallons per minute is a lot. Crunch the numbers on it. It's a huge amount. If you're filtering your pool at 50 gallons per minute and you ran the filter 24 hours, that's a lot of flow. But it is significant also. We're still at 1.83 amps. That's very little. 370 watts. Not very much power at all. It starts to consume a lot of power when we get towards the high end of the scale here, and that's the significant thing. Fifty six, fifty seven gallons per minute, five hundred and fifteen watts, two point four three amps. Sixty-five gallons per minute. Again, this is just a single two-inch discharge pipe. Is all this is going through? Sixty-five gallons per minute, and we hardly even have the motor cranked up yet. Just under seven hundred watts, three point two amps. Seventy five gallons per minute, nine hundred and twenty six watts, not even one kilowatt yet, four point two amps. Start to see a bigger jump in power consumption now. Seventy nine gallons per minute. There. We've jumped over one thousand watts, so the top right now reads in kilowatts, one point two one kilowatts or about twelve hundred watts, five point four six amps. This would be maximum speed if this were 120 volts. 90 gallons per minute. 1.54 kilowatts, 6.9 amps.
Now we're up to 98 gallons per minute. 1.92 kilowatts. 8.6 amps. And now maximum speed. One hundred and seven, one hundred and eight gallons per minute, two point two nine kilowatts, ten point two amps. All right. Well, as you saw there, when you get towards the the higher RPMs the amount of power that it consumes goes up drastically but you're only getting a couple more gallons per minute every time that happens and that's because as you turn down the rpm of the the motor there's a linear drop in the amount of flow versus an exponential drop in the amount of power consumed and that is the entire premise behind variable speed pumps that's why you should buy one and that's why they save you a lot of money if you found this information helpful, please be sure to like this video and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And you can check out my website, swimmingpoolsteve.com.